What's going on, good people? This is Balaji from Brave Young Heroes. And man, I've been trying to get this man on the show for a minute. Let me set this up for you. Now, his soccer skills program is catching attention from the major league the major league soccer and the u.s national team he's the founder of captain elite he's the mind behind the rapid skill development program the three barriers to player success the secrets of messy dribbling speed mm -hmm. of play kills these are all killer programs folks if you're a soccer family he's spoken to thousands of student athletes parents and coaches across the country from Greensboro, North Carolina. Please put your hands together. Help me welcome one of the nation's greatest minds in athlete, mental, resilience, and technical performance, Mr. Captain Elite himself, Mike Keating. Welcome, Mike. Balaji, I don't know if anybody can do an introduction better than you, so that is a quite a talent that you have there. Thank you very much. I, I'll do my best to live up to a fraction of what you just said. <laughs> Hey, listen, it has been a great, great pleasure to uh, know you over the past couple of years. My 12-year-old son has the distinct pleasure of going through some of the Captain Elite courses. They are world-class stuff. So I'm excited to dive into this. We've got a lot of parents out here that are not just soccer parents, but youth athlete parents in general. And yeah. Mike, mm -hmm. a lot of us are struggling, a lot of us parents think the kids are fine but a lot of us parents are struggling with figuring out you know this this sports thing what do we really want to get out of it am i trying to raise a professional athlete are we trying to build you know discipline and resilience and good habits how much should i push my child uh, you know yeah. tiger mom or dad versus just lay back and be right. the cheerleader with the pom-poms all great questions <laughs> all great worries they're all great concerns yes yeah so we're gonna need a lot of help but let me sort of orient people the, the five people who maybe haven't heard of captain elite yet in the yeah. world right could you maybe illustrate with the story of brent bronico a professional player in mls major league soccer tell us about brent sure. Sure. So Brant Bronico is, first of all, he's a wonderful human being. And to me, that's the goal of youth athletics is it's not about just about sport and just about skill, but it's really about shaping, carving, um, creating better people. And Brant Bronico came to me years ago and just kind of, we just decided that he would train with me and the kids just to be a leader. And this was when he was in college and it was during his um, off, you know, off schedule. Mm. And um, we got to know each other and he went pro. So I didn't have much influence on him getting to better, really. He went pro, went to Chicago Fire and his first season was, I would probably say for him, he'd probably say it wasn't the best season. And he got 53 minutes playing time. So that, 53 that, minutes in a, in a game. 53 minutes for the entire season the entire of playing season. time, the entire season of playing time. And, um, but he, Brant has this incredible self-belief that he believes that if I just keep working, I will get there. He came home his winter break and uh, he's here for about six or eight weeks and he, he grew up uh, very close to where I'm from in Greensboro. Anyway, um, I said, Brant, would you be willing to go through a rigorous routine a training routine just like i take the kids through but you're going to do about three years worth of training in about five and a half weeks and he said i will do anything that it takes to get better so i put this program together and it's video based and so he did some of it with me in person but most of it he did on his own mm. and we recorded his development and and he struggled in fact here's what was interesting this is a professional player he was ranked top five d1 midfielder when he was at UNC Charlotte as a junior, top five in the country. So he's a great player, already a great player. But what he said is after day one, I interviewed him. I said, what do you think? He said, I feel like Bambi. You know, this is a professional player because Bambi, he can't walk when Bambi right. is born. And that's what he felt like. He was going through the same exercises that our youth players are going through. And he felt like, gosh, I've never been trained this way before. And it's very foreign to me. But obviously what happens to Brant is because he's older, he's more mature, he's more dedicated, and he's more disciplined, he gets better much, much faster. At the end of five and a half weeks, he comes, you know, I've interviewed him, I've videoed him, and I've watched him grow through that five and a half weeks, and I've taken clips 
of all that, and I've sent it out to inspire kids. But what was the really interesting, the interesting story was when he went back to Chicago Fire. Um, Basti Schweinsteiger is one of the great world greats, and Basti Schweinsteiger said that you, you know, what happened? You did something. You, I can see that you're stronger. I can see that you're wow. quicker. I can see that your skills are better. You're seeing the game better. Uh, his coach noticed it. But what always happens is in a program, you need to have a little break. There has to be somewhere that something happens in the team because they're just not going to unseat the entire team to suit somebody who's oh, actually gotten better. So right. somebody got injured, had his chance, and they basically never took him back off the field. Wow. And he got went from 53 minutes to 1,700 minutes, and he continues to have an impact. Oh. This is – I, let's see, is he in his third season? He's, I think he's in his third season right now. But anyway, um, he has, he's um, made a huge leap. And I asked him after he got back on the field and he scored some goals and he's making an impact. I said, what got you there? And he said, well, the only thing I think did, did different over the winter break was your training. He said, of course, I'm doing physical training. I'm doing weightlifting. I'm doing sprints and agility, but your training. And he said, that's what did it. So Here's what I love about this story is that here's a guy who is extraordinary already. Already. But he goes to an extraordinary level, and he's no longer the best player. Mm. And that's kind of what happens in a lot of youths. They, they go into a situation where they're good. Maybe they get promoted, and they become, okay, now I'm maybe middle of the pack or maybe even lower quarter or even maybe at the bottom, and I'm just kind of holding on. What Brant believed, and I love, absolutely love about Brant, and I, I believe this myself, is that if I, as long as I'm willing to work, stay gritty, my skills will get better, my confidence will get better, my self-belief will get better. It's just not going to happen overnight. So Brandt's story is just one of many. He's a named player, but there are countless youth players that went through the same exact process. There's a player, uh, her name is Allison. She's uh, um, actually out in your way, NCFC player. And um, she started out with us as a U12 player, as a challenge player. It just really was passionate about the game. It's in her family's blood. Um, but nothing, I mean, she would say today, and really nothing special. Within 18 months of really going heads down, she climbed to the top of the, uh, the, her club on the side of the, the uh, club that she was in. And now is just that far away from making the absolute top team wow. in, the, in that club. So um, but it's all, and I attribute this not to me, not to my work, but really attribute it to the kids. Brandt, they, they have to want to do it. And if they want to do it, I can show them a very crystal clear path on how to get there. You know, there's a saying that um, when the student is ready, yeah. the, the, the teacher will appear. Yeah. And, and I like how you've pointed out that the kids have to want it. Sometimes it can feel like, well, sometimes it feels like the parents maybe want it a bit more than yeah. the child does. And let's talk about that dynamic first before we then talk about the second dynamic, which is the kid wants it, but they don't have a grinder's mentality yet. Yeah. So, so, that, so what do we do when the parent yeah. wants it more than the child does? Well, I tell you, my biggest, uh, and this is my best advice probably in any, any, any venue would be you got to keep it fun. If you're, a, if you're a parent and it's all about your, your dream and your vision yeah. and, your, and, and you can make it fun for the kid, well, guess what? They're probably going to adapt your dream and your vision as their own because it's super fun but if it's your dream and your vision and it's a grind and there's no fun there's no love in it you're going to create you know you're going to create a little bit of a monster who's not really has no passion for the game has no passion for what you're trying to teach them mm. and you you kind of lose you know, they lose grip on uh, why they're doing it in the first place so mm. it's i in my opinion it's always got to be fun and when I say always got to be fun, I'm not naive to think that every training session, every game is fun because it's not. There's a grind. There was a speaker, and I can't remember the guy's name, who said that 95% um, of his work, he was a great speaker, 95% of his work is an absolute grind. It's just not fun, but he does it because the 5% of him speaking publicly wow. is so extraordinary wow. that that inspires him to do the 95% of a grind. So mm. when I say fun, it's, it's obviously not going to be fun all the time, 
because sometimes it is absolutely a grind. Sometimes, you know, and I, I would tell you this, though, as a young, young kids, elementary school kids, you really, really, because their attention span is so low, you've got to keep it fun pretty much all the time, you know, because they're just not going to have that mental discipline and that fortitude to stick mm -hmm. with it. So as they get a little bit older, yeah, there can be more of a grind. And, you know, and Brant would say, and Brant did say this, he's, I asked him what he would have changed in his uh, youth training. He said, I never did purposeful training. Hmm. And, what, and that's what we call our training. It's very purposeful. It's goal-centric, very methodical. Um, they memorize the exercise. They break down the, we teach them how to break down the exercise. Then we teach them in, how to do it in parts. And then we teach them how to pull it together in a whole. Then we teach them how to compete with themselves and get better and better. And he said, I've never did that. He said, I basically just, you know, went out in my backyard against a little wall and I just knocked the ball around. He said, I wish I had maybe half of my training was purposeful mm. and half of it was just pure, you know, fun, you know, knocking, you know, I used to, he used to hit the ball against a, a target in a tree. How many times can I hit the, hit the wow. target in a tree? That's just pure fun. You need that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would just say that it's it's got to be their thing, um, not your thing. And uh, it's, a, it's a mistake everybody makes. Every, every parent makes that sometimes it becomes a little too much of their thing. That fascinates me. And, and I love how you've illustrated that Brandt spent a lot of his time <clears throat> not only working on his own, but working in a playful, joyful sort of manner. There are a lot of professional world-class players now who exhibit some of the best players in the world who exhibit that joy. You see yeah. players from Brazil in particular and places like that, that they just play with a freedom and, yeah. and they have a level of skill that is like, how did they learn that? Yeah. And I can see how if the, when the joy is taken out, players might develop competence, but they won't have that freedom to experiment and really become great. Yeah. I think the freedom piece is, I would say the freedom piece is missing a lot in American soccer. And it's, it's, um, and partly it's because the kids aren't prepared, but it's partly because of our mentality that, um, you know, we don't as a, a U.S. soccer in general, and I don't, there's not a particular club. It's not, it's just kind of a culture. We don't spend time mastering the ball. We are most teams don't have the time to spend time mastering skills. Mm. So they basically try and teach the athletic talent that they have to play together the most effective way to win games. Mm. That's not a criticism. It's just a, it's just the environment that we're in. So what I am all about is personal responsibility and personal mastery, personal responsibility. You said the word freedom and I think you're so right. Freedom, personal responsibility that I, it is up to me. If it is to be, it is up to me, gives me huge amounts of freedom. I no longer have to wait for my parents, my coach, hey, go out there and knock the ball around. No, I don't have to wait for that. If it is to be, it is up to me. That's personal responsibility. And that gives you freedom to do things on your own. And I absolutely love that. And master things that are important to you. Could become a personality, you know, express your personality through the ball by mastering certain skills that are really important to you you know if you if you talk to great coaches college coaches and uh, and beyond they'll tell you you're never going to find somebody or very rarely would you find somebody who's extraordinary at all skills but there are you need to have something that you're really special about at a whatever level whether you're a rec player and i know some rec players right now that are trained with us who are actually quite extraordinary mm -hmm. and they're way beyond their level but they're they're very happy playing at that level and i encourage them just keep going master the ball at your at whatever environment that you want to be in because it just makes it so much more fun yeah yeah mastery hmm. you th there's a fascinating piece that you talk about mike the uh, the value of being a grinder yeah a and you actually say that there's two kinds of medicine <laughs> right yeah. you're either committed to doing the work so suffering up front yeah. and doing the work or procrastinating so not doing the work now and then you suffer later could you sort of elaborate yes. on that for us yeah there's a uh, uh my daughter um plays at a, a wonderful university and and the coach there he he has them memorize um famous quotes famous 
passages, and one of them was Viktor Frankl. If there is a meaning in life, then there must be.